He is 18 year old. He's from Ireland and he is studying in the Netherlands. And in 2019, he won the Google Science Fair for a project in which he investigates a method of filtering microplastics out of the water. His name is Fion Ferreira and here he is on video. Hello everybody. My name is Fionn Ferreira. I am from Ireland, I'm 18 years old, and I am the winner of the Google Global Science Fair 2018 to 19. I won with a project called an investigation into the removal of microplastics from water using fair fluids. This is a new method to remove microplastics from water using an interesting technology and an interesting, I guess, cool science method, which I'll show you over the next quarter of an hour. I live pretty far down south in Ireland and that means that I have some stunning scenery where I live. I go kayaking a lot and I'm really inspired by just seeing that coastline the whole time. However, we have a problem there and that is plastic pollution. What I set out doing was in 2016 kayaking around looking at our whole coastline and trying to analyze how many plastics were on the shore. I was counting them, categorizing them and making geospatial maps where I could then look at just the impact the plastics were having on our environment. I was looking at big plastic particles mainly, but also microplastics, tiny plastic particles. And from this, I just identified how big this problem really was. So I thought, well, is there any method I could use or investigate um, that could remove uh, microplastics from wastewater? So I did a bit of research and it turned out that there was no method to remove microplastics from wastewater, except for filtration. And we can't filter wastewater, it's not organic materials and it's just a really slow process. So I was thinking about it, I did a lot of research and um, from that I guess I thought, well, maybe I could try out a couple of things. I'm sure there's something that could remove these. So actually, um, I was thinking about this for a very long time, but later I actually was at our seashore and I saw a rock and it had oil spill residue on it. And stuck to this oil spill residue were plastic particles. From this, I asked myself, why is this happening? And I did a bit more research and I found out that, well, plastic particles are what we call nonpolar. And oil is nonpolar too. And in chemistry, likes attract likes, which means that nonpolar things attract non-polar things. So I thought, hmm, this is interesting. Maybe if I added vegetable oil to an expansive water with plastics in it, well, maybe plastics would stick to this vegetable oil. So I tried it out and tried out different oils and I found that light vegetable oils would actually work the best. So I thought, um, that's interesting, but that wouldn't be effective because we'd be adding oil to the environment. A bit of time passed, a bit more research, and I actually heard about ferrofluid from a high school science experiment. And ferrofluid is a magnetic liquid. It's tiny iron particles suspended in oil. And ferrofluids are made of basically rust powder mixed with vegetable oil. And so I thought, well, maybe I could make my own ferrofluids. And maybe like that, I would be able to, I guess, um, magnetize the oil containing plastic mixture. So I did a couple of tests and I tried things out and it looked like it worked pretty well. So I decided to make some microplastics just by sanding some plastic bottles and different things. And then I decided to analyze my method. I started out with a suspension of microplastics in water, where I added microplastics to water, making a suspension. I then added oil, vegetable oil, and magnetite powder, turning it all into a ferrofluid. I then um, mixed this together, binding the ferrofluid to the plastic particles. And finally, I could use a magnet to remove this from water. And the magnet would basically attract both the um, magnetite powder, but also the oil and plastic particles stuck to that too. And you can see, it's pretty impressive. I love watching this, even though I've done this many thousand times. In fact, I think it should be included in those videos, those satisfying things to watch videos that you often see advertised on YouTube. So I had this method, but I didn't have a way to test it. So I got building, I got to work, and I decided to look at to see if I could build something to test how efficient this method was. Remember, I lived really, really remote, so there was no way for me to go to a lab. So if I wanted to use any equipment, I would have to build it. So that's exactly what I did. I set out to build something called a spectrometer. It sends light through the water or a sample of water and then analyzes it using a diffraction grating which is basically a thing with lots of tiny slits and a webcam behind it. I'm analyzing the spectrum of light or the colors broken down from the light 
that I capture. And um, here we can see just a couple of prototypes. I made lots of prototypes, believe me, some of which exploded, some caught fire. Uh, my parents weren't very pleased with me doing this in my room for obvious reasons, probably. Um, but here we can see my final spectrometer. It started out with a light source, which shone light through a sample of water into a webcam and diffraction grating. I could then analyze that light in a software called Spectrograph and like that, use the Beer-Lambert law to analyze how efficient my method was after capturing a spectrum just like this. When I capture a spectrum, I can see a series of interesting lines. Those lines show the brightness of light at the different constituent colors of the spectrum of light. The Beer-Lambert law says that the concentration of, of something in the water is proportional to the absorption of light at a constant wavelength. So I could apply this directly, select the wavelength, and then analyze the concentration from that. And I got many results and tested my extractions before and after extraction. Um, I then took averages and did this many, many times. Of course, though, I didn't fully trust my method or my spectrometer either. This was a piece of kit that cost me uh, less than 15 euro. Okay, it cost me several hundred hours of building, but less than 15 euro. So um, I, I didn't believe it entirely. So I decided, well, I have to um, maybe use an auxiliary method as well. That's what I did. I built a microscope too, as one does. And I built a microscope that takes an image of my water containing plastics before and after extraction. And even visually, we can see that there's a difference here. I could then analyze my pictures in Adobe Photoshop and analyze the number of pixels covered in plastic. I could do that before and after, get a percentage decrease in plastics. So I got a lot of results out of this. I did the 10 most commonly found microplastics in our environment, including high density polyethylene, like milk bottles, epoxy, um, then everything to low density polyethylene, um, and even um, things like wa uh, washing machine fibers and microbeads as well. I found that washing machine fibers, which I actually got from my parents' washing machine, like I took apart the washing machine, it never worked correctly afterwards, it always left dirty smears on our washing. So my parents, again, were not very happy with me. Basically, these fibers were the easiest to remove from water with an average extraction of 93% plus or minus 1.19% extraction. My hypothesis for all of these tests was 85% extraction. And this was indeed met. I conducted I have a hypothesis test at the 95% confidence interval to test this and to verify this. The lowest and most difficult to extract microplastics were polypropylene, and that's because they're a slightly denser plastic than the other. However, these still had a, an over 78% extraction rate, which is still extremely good, and I'm pleased with this. So I've shown that it works on a small scale, but now I'm working on making it bigger, actually getting it to a larger scale so it can be used. This, of course, requires a little bit of external help because I can't build everything in my room anymore, mainly because my room's probably too small for all of this. Um, particularly now that I'm at college, I'm actually studying chemistry in the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. Um, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And uh, you can actually see me in my room now. Um, and I'm trying to build a prototype um, which could be used in wastewater treatment plants, a continuous flow system where water would flow through an area of oil and then uh, plastics would be captured in this. And it's quite interesting. I'm also looking at a system that could be built into ships. So as they go across the Atlantic, they would actually be filtering microplastics inadvertently. Um, and then, of course, I got my average extraction rate for everything, which was 87% plus or minus 1.1% extraction, which I'm really proud of because this is higher than the extraction rate of filtration as well. So finally, here we can see organic material tests. And this is the latest stuff I've been doing. I've been adding mud to my samples and looking using UV light at the extraction before and after extraction. And you can see that even with organic material, it's still a very um, efficient method with over a 97% extraction rate. And um, I'm working on this as well as larger prototypes, as well as trying to tell others about this method, because I think that um, it's not only about my method. I want to get other people inspired to look at creative thinking and creative ways to solve problems, because, of course, this is only one problem. There are many more left to solve. So I'm passionate about speaking to others um, about my work um, and trying to, to inspire others, too. 
Finally, if anybody has any questions, I would love to try and answer them. My contact details should be displayed on screen now. Um, please head over to my website, www.fionferreira.com, and I would really like to thank you for your attention.